Hi, my name is Julie, and I was part of the multi-level marketing industry for five years and part of two high control groups simultaneously as part of those five years too. And I started speaking out December 13th, 2021. And I didn't, um, I left pretty much at that same time too. So I didn't heal, uh, which was a mistake. I just launched. <laughs> and it was about four months after I started speaking out, I, I sought professional help. So anybody that's thinking of exiting, you're starting to think about exiting the NLM industry, it's a good sign you're on your way out. I definitely recommend um, thinking about getting therapy to help you. Uh, so there we go. So anyway, I thought I'd do this video because I had this idea last night. I love to create content. When I was within multi-level marketing, I, re I love to create content. I found that that was one of my my passions. I think it's it's like just creating and expressing yourself and having and just having fun with it, you know? And I really, really like to do it on TikTok and I've started to you know post more here on YouTube. I still post on Facebook and Instagram as well. So I'm, I'm always liking to play around and, you know, experiment with stuff. Just like <laughs> Last night I had an idea to create a piece of content on Facebook. Now, part of my story, my experience was I went live every day on Facebook for three and a half years straight because I was coached that that is, if you do that, if you keep showing up, if you're a lunatic, if you have laser focus and you do that, this is, you know, this is the path to success. You have to be willing to do what most people aren't willing to do. And I did, I did all that. And, and so when, you know, when I decided, when I left and I was like, I can't, I had to get off Facebook um, because the high control group I was part of, it was like on Facebook. I knew that if I started posting anything about anti MLM, they were going to come after me. And when I did, it, it did happen. So I had to be pretty ruthless with setting boundaries. They didn't respect those boundaries. Um, and then I had to, I started to just swear all the time. That was, I mean, I swear anyway, but I was just, you know, all the time writing it to, just to like go get away. You're not, this is not for you. I'm trying to like create safe spaces on social media for people to speak out, share their experiences. And so anyway, I decided, I thought this would be a really cool idea to create a piece of content in the fashion that I would uh, when I was still within network marketing, but now I'm on the outside of it. I think it would be, it would be really cool to explore this like in my healing and p potentially reach people that are in the high control group I was a part of using that same language, the cadence of speech, the, the tactics, the strategies, and really like mess things up by giving really good value. That's what we would call it. So my previous video I did on YouTube, I was looking, I was breaking down a post that had 10 tips from top earners with a company that rhymes with mold air. <laughs> I just can't, I can't help myself. And it was not good advice. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a video and I'm going to give people for Black Friday that are within multi-level marketing companies, some really good tips that will help them increase their sales. And it's going to mess things up because it's coming from an anti MLM creator. And this is good advice. This is advice. It's, I used it myself. I trained my team on, I trained others on it too. You will increase your sales if you use these three tips. Of course, I'm like talking about like exposing these tips as well. So they'll probably like a limited, um, a limited run on this, but the tip number two, that one doesn't matter where, what you're at. You can translate this to anything, uh, whether you're in multi-level marketing or not. <laughs> That's also a tactic we were taught. You like kind of draw the little, little seed, like, Ooh, what is this going to be about? I thought it would be a nice way to bridge conversation between people that are still within multi-level marketing as well, who are starting to question and realizing like, am I crazy? Is this all in my head? I'm raising questions and I'm having doubts and people are telling me I'm crazy, that there's something wrong with me. So it's, I, I felt like this would be a really cool way to, you know, just have that piece of content out there to potentially land with someone in the language that they're used to. And it's going to help them out. And I'm not get asking for anything in return. And it's going to, honestly, it's going to fuck around. It's going to fuck with people because when you're in a commercial cult, which multi-level marketing companies, the multi-level marketing industry are. That's why it's so hard to leave. 
that's why we get into such a like a fervor about haters and anybody with criticism when you're in a commercial cult it's black and white you're either with us or you're against us you're either supporting us or you're not it's either for you or you don't vibrate at the right frequency it's it's always one or the other so when you have information coming from a source that is considered like a hater or somebody that's terrible but it's really good fucking advice that's going to this is what happened with me is like when you see a leader or your upline or your company do something really wrong or they're really off about something that's the first crack that can like open up your critical thinking because if they're wrong about one thing they they're going to be wrong about other things because up until this point you're like i'm just going to do what i'm told i'm coachable i'm coachable i'm positive i will put in the work you see when they're wrong about something and what would really fuck around with people, I think, which is fine. Cause then this is my Gen X-ness in me. I know it's going to needle someone out there. So there's always that added benefit is it's coming from a source where it's like, it shouldn't be, you're not behaving in the way that you should be behaving in the way you should be not offering value. You should not be helping people within the multi-level marketing industry. That's just what, what's going on here. So when there's, it's like churning the soil, start fires, plant seeds. That's what, that's what I'm thinking anyway. And I don't know if I'm always going to continue to speak out and create anti MLM content. Um, I, I love creating content. I didn't know I was going to be in the multi-level marketing industry five years. And yet I, I, I ended up here, right? I don't know what the next five years are going to entail, but for now it's, um, it's, I believe it's helping some people. Um, it's helping me. And so let's do this. So anyway, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this Facebook live video that I did last night. And I'm going to just, ex I'm going to expand or comment on what I'm doing here. So I'm after, this is the fucking long game I'm playing here. So Gen X long game <laughs> is that I, I want to plant that seed of like the, of the, the incongruency of it all. And I know how to reach people. So that, that's why I'm doing this video is like in hopes that, you know, three or four months down the road, they're going to start thinking a little bit more and that will open it up. And it's not just going to be because of this piece of content or, you know, any particular creator's piece of content. It'll be a lot, their own experiences, things like that. All these things stack together and then we eventually move out, get out of the industry, you know, but I think this could be a really helpful piece. And it's fun for people that were um, ex members of the group, or there might be still members of the group, but they don't participate in it anymore. Um, because there was the, a lifer option that you could just, now you're a perpetual member for life of the group, you know, like this lifetime membership option, uh, because I've had people comment and there's quite a few comments. So on Facebook, you know, it's, it's challenging to get anything seen anyway, videos or comments. There's a lot of good conversation going on there with people that were part of, um, network marketing, um, that were part of the group I was a part of, and they're safe enough to play around and comment. It's really cool. And it's doing it in a way that's like, it's fun, it's respectful, but it's also calling out the bullshit. I don't swear in that video. And I did that specifically. It was hard, <laughs> but you got to know your audience at times. So let's, let's do this. One more thing before I get into this is I just want to say that I respect everybody involved within the multi-level marketing industry, who you really believe you're doing the right thing. People can be involved in these things like 10 years, 12 years, and they, they really believe that it's a legitimate business model. And it's not so simple for me to just point out, you know, behavior and say, this is, this is terrible. Like you're a terrible person. Like I'm going to mock you. Right. Because I see myself in these people because I was one of these people, even, you know, even people I probably shouldn't, but I see pieces of myself in everyone. And I think it's important, uh, compassion wise coming from that place for me to speak out in my content. I really care about people. All right, so let's get into this. Okay, so the title of the video I chose was Proven MLM Black Friday Marketing Strategies to Increase Your Sales This Year from an Anti-MLM Creator. So when I was coached and I was 
learned uh, in the network marketing coaching group I was part of is that a title or the headline of your video on Facebook anyway has to be compelling because people are scrolling through Facebook and it has, you could have the best content ever, but if you don't have a really good title, nobody's going to stop to watch it. So I thought, okay, this is going to be a compelling title. And I, and I also have enough kind of like um, influence, whatever that means, but enough people have are curious about what I'm doing because I had a lot of visibility in the group and I've made a lot of, like, I've made a big splash when I left. <laughs> I came in like a wrecking ball. Anyway, and so, and people have, um, you know, they're, they're looking at my stuff. So I thought, and I have not done a Facebook live video for months. So I thought this would be pretty cool. So the title plus like me and also um, doing a live video on Facebook, which is like what my thing was. I thought, oh, this would be pretty cool. So that's why I chose that title. And I thought like at the end to like put from an anti MLL, anti MLM creator, it's just such a juxtaposition of weirdness. I thought this will catch some attention. I hope you can hear me. So I, I don't know how to do this. This is my first time, you know, doing the screen recording thing here. Um, with my face in the corner. God, I can tell what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, let's press play. I've gone live on Facebook for some time. And I decided this might be a really cool way. I like to create content as part of healing from my involvement with the MLM industry. But I also really like to help people and connect with people, helping others exit the multi-level marketing industry. So I am going to do this. This isn't deceptive. Um, I'm going to be completely upfront with you in this video. Oh, I wanted to make sure that this is said too. This isn't clickbait. This isn't like I'm going to like bait and switch. Oh, this is the title. And then I'm like going to preach to you how, you know, about multi-level marketing is a, is a scam. I don't do that. I'm like, I'm going to be totally upfront with um, why I'm using this title, why I'm doing the video. There's going to be no deception here. Like I want people to leave the multi-level marketing industry and I'm going to give them some advice. That's what I thought would be really cool, like a cool approach to do. And, and it goes against what multi-level marketing uh, reps are taught to do. It's always like the bait and switch, the transaction, the thinking ahead of what I can, how can I create conversations afterwards? I think this is, there's no better um, teacher than by example. You know, you can tell somebody how to do something, but how you do something is, is pretty compelling. That, that's going to be the word of the day, I think. I don't know why I wiggle around so much. It's like my back is sore and I sometimes put a cushion on my thing. That's why I'm always moving around <laughs> chair. What I intend to do. So I am going to share with you three proven steps, like a strategy, three strategies that you can use to increase your sales during Black Friday this year, 2022. These will work for you. And the reason, so why I want to do this video in this way, I think it would be, um, I was doing a live video every day on Facebook for three and a half years. And then I stopped and then you don't need to know this whole story. I've got content all over the internet <laughs> on all different kinds of platforms. You can, and I've done a number of interviews on YouTube with different creators as well as various podcasts. So you could find out more about my story there. But I thought this would be really cool to um, on like, like a number of angles on this. So the first one is that I am gonna be sharing with you like three, so the reason why I'm pausing this is that there's different ways of showing up on different social media platforms. And that's, so Facebook is different than YouTube. You know, Facebook is different than Instagram, than TikTok. A lot of principles or concepts, they can be, you know, applied, whatever, you repurpose content or cross posting content. I think somebody had left a comment on one of my TikToks that I uploaded here as a YouTube short. And I'm like, I'd never, I'd never heard the word cross posting. It was always repurposed content. That's what we were taught in network marketing. So I think, I think it's insightful to show like the format and how people kind of show up on Facebook and put it in a YouTube, you know, video. So, because this is going to be similar to what your friends and family do or what they're being taught to do. So that's my, that's where I'm kind of thinking along that. It's really, it's beneficial to people, people on Facebook because it's in the format that they're used to, uh, format that they're used to seeing me. Um, what they've done themselves or been coached to do or coaching their team to do. But then I'm also being able to take this and then provide like commentary here for a totally different audience for people who are, um, have had, have been negatively impacted. 
by the multi-level marketing industry, maybe they're um, coming on to YouTube because it's safer to read the comments here than it is on Facebook. There's no, it's still very treacherous territory to even like a video that I make or an anti-MLM creator makes. If you're still within the MLM industry, no way. Your upline or a friend is going to comment like, why are you watching that content? It's, these things are commercial cults. That's what happens. Proven steps. Hey, Delroy. <laughs> These are proven strategies. I've used them um, to increase your sales. If you're in the multi-level marketing industry, this Black Friday. And I also want to show people um, like how I've left. And so you see the repetition, and this is something that you might not know, is the reason why we'll repeat things over and over again are, is because people aren't tuning into the live or to like a YouTube video where you just pause it. You do, it starts like a movie and then you play it. On a live, people are coming in and, and exiting all the time. So that's why we're taught to just keep saying the same things over and over again, like just interspersed throughout because you don't know what somebody's coming into, like what point they're coming into the live and you want to engage with them live. You want to keep them on that live. So that's a little piece of insight for you. And how I do videos now, how I create content now and kind of show you in my mode of being in network marketing, because I'm going to do like a thing where I kind of switch off from how I am right now. And I'm going to slip into network marketing mode. And so it's going to be uncomfortable. This really freaks me out that I can still do this. And it's like, I don't know how, I don't have the language yet to express what this is. This isn't like being fake. I see people, I'm like, that's so fake. But I know it's deeper than that. <laughs> because I, you'll see it when I do it. It felt like, I don't know, you know, hearing about cult identity. But you make it your own. Like, it sends roots. You know, like, I don't know, a different kind of bush or a tree it just goes down within every part of you and you make it your own. There's truths in the stuff that we're taught and there's a lot of contradictions and just like messed up stuff as well, but there's truths and it's those truths I think that maybe take root. I don't know. It's, it's really weird. It's really fucking weird. And I could feel it like when I switch off into that mode, when I do that, it felt like, um, it doesn't feel like an act. It feels like I'm pulling on those parts of the truth. And this is what you have to do. It's almost like, um, as a race, like that's, you put on your kit, you're, you're going to do it. No excuses. It's like, that's it. You're on the bike. You piss yourself on the bike. I'm triathlon. Right? <laughs> um, you just keep going. You just, that's what you do on a normal training day. You're not going to do it. You're going to pull into the gas station. You're going to go to the bathroom, you know, like, um, and I know there's people that race that never did that, but there's a lot of us that did. So no judgment. That's, <laughs> that's just what you do. So it's, it's kind of like that. It's like, I'm going to be uh, performing. I'm, I have to bring my, my a game and this is what it's like. So there's like that, I guess the, another angle on that um, toxic positivity or showing up it's you, but amplified, but only like a small part of you. I don't know. Maybe I'll have, Maybe you can provide some insight as to what this is about. Comfortable to see. Um, but I think, I don't know, it's part of my healing. I feel like I need to do this. I think this is a really cool idea. I do <laughs> think do this is think? a cool idea. <laughs> you get to be the judge of this. So I think that's it. I think that's like the preamble here. So uh, before I get into this, thank you for being here. And um, your sleep and mental health is the most important thing in all of this. So where, whatever you are, whatever company you're in, um, whatever multi-level marketing company you're in, you're in these tips. It's important to say that logic and facts and statistics will not reach somebody that is within a commercial cult or the multi-level marketing industry. It will help reach people who are exiting and starting to critically think. Absolutely. So for this particular piece of content, I knew I was going to attract people who are out, who are exiting. And I'm also hoping that one person out there, I listen to my instincts, the instincts, the, your instincts are always, you're always right for some, you know, it's just, and I'm like, there's someone out there that this just might land. And the best way to get through that is to talk about the good things, the commonalities, something that I could help them out with, instead of being told that what you're doing is wrong. Because I know when I was in and I was presented with facts and statistics that drove me deeper in. And that's what, that's what drives people deeper into cults. You can have all the facts. It doesn't mean anything. That's why these things are so difficult to address because it's the, it's the long game, you know? Tips are going to work. <laughs> so if you're ready, 
I'm going to like switch into um, my network marketing. Mode. Hang on to your hats. And I'm going to use some language and you're going to be able to identify um, the rhythm of speech, the cadence of speech when I repeat certain words over and over again. And you're going to be able to detect like the subtle ways that we talk and then kind of drive the conversation. You're going to, you're going to find this stuff. Hi, Karen. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Look who's back, right? I thought this would be something really cool to try. And I might upload this on uh, YouTube afterwards. I don't know. We'll see. But I thought Facebook would be like the perfect place for this. So I'm going to switch into um, network marketing mode and pretend that I'm like just getting on and going to deliver this information for you. Are you ready? I, I just hope when people come in afterwards, they're like, are you serious? Because it's not who I am now. It wasn't who I was ever, but uh, regardless of how the information is going to be delivered, it is helpful information and, it, and you can use this on uh, if you ever choose to leave the uh, multi-level marketing industry as well. And I've, okay, so let's just do this. All right. Are you ready? I'm going to do this. All right. Hi, my name is Julie Anderson. Thank you so much for being here. I Do you struggle with increasing your sales during any kind of sale period? Black Friday is coming up this year. Next week, Thanksgiving is coming up. Black Friday is going to be on next week. Delroy says ready. Okay, you're, I'm breaking character here, Delroy. And I have a three-step proven strategy to increase your sales during Black Friday. Now, not everybody knows these strategies. These are proven strategies. People might think they know these strategies, but they don't know these strategies and they can be hidden from people. These strategies can be quite obvious to some people, but they can also be hidden from most people. So I'm going to share with you today these three proven strategies for you to increase your sales during Black Friday. I think that's the NLP stuff. <laughs> that's what I suspect anyway. Okay, so the first tip is for sure your mental health. Your sleep is the most important. So even when you're um, encouraged by your uplines <laughs> or by groups or by trainers that you know, you've know you got to you know pump out a lot of content or add people to a VIP list, please make sure that your sleep and your mental health is the most important thing. And that's what I just want to kind of like refer back I think that's the closest thing that I can get to help people like it, it, cause it's not going to happen. Like in the multi-level marketing industry, these reps black Friday coming up, they're going to be going all out. It's going to be, people will uh, form groups, pods, work pods. They'll call it, um, stay up all night, all day, just barely like ordering in food there. Everything gets pushed to the side. It's all like, I'm working my business. Oh, I'm like so exhausted. It's a real thing. So I know this is, I know this is a shot in the dark. I know it's not going to be, but I am I'm trying to just winkle in a little bit of a little bit of help, you know, to just maybe, you know, someone can be reminded that it's okay to sleep, you know. While I'm still focusing on like providing the value what this title is about. I mean, this might this is like a this is I know I recognize a lot, most of this is futile. But I did have a lot of it, uh, people talk about this from people that had been in the group. So if for nothing else, if it doesn't reach anybody else, um, it's going to give people on YouTube some insight as to how this rolls around on Facebook. And it's been good, like humor, laughing. People that have been in the group, um, we're laughing through this together. And it's not, uh, I don't think it's being offensive to anybody. You know, it's not like where I'm like, fucking assholes, right? <laughs> Which I have said. <laughs> that one. So the first step of these proven strategies that most people don't know, but I'm going to share with you right now is to, if you haven't already done this, is do a live video to build your exclusive VIP customer list. I'm going to expand on what this means. So you want to, the content of your live video, I would just go for talking about the benefits of the benefits. Have you heard this training before? I know many people have. I know that's what I was trained on. So if you want to think of the benefits of um, like shampoo, that's the company I was with. I've sold shampoo. If you want to talk about the benefits of shampoo, it, that your hair gets shinier. What are the benefits of having shinier hair? You're more confident. So to keep it really simple for you, because a lot of this information when um, trainers or other network marketing coaches or your uplines they give you so much information you don't know what to do i'm going to make it really simple for you all roads lead to confidence 
anything that you sell can be traced. You can use confidence as the benefit of the benefits. So the content of your video to help you build your VIP exclusive VIP customer list could be three tip or a tip on how you became more confident and then tell a story about that. The confidence aspect is the benefit of the benefit of your product, any product, any product is going to all roads lead to confidence. So an idea for you to consider doing. So why I chose to do this is that there's so much when you're in these commercial cults, you're given so much information and your time is taken up. You know, it's, it's, it takes over your life. It is, it ticks off so many boxes of the bite model behavior, information, thought, emotional control from Stephen Hassan. And a lot of this information, people get really excited about learning marketing strategies and content creation. And you'll see top leaders that that's all they do. Like they're, they'll, they'll be talking about their team sales. They're never talking about their personal sales because their personal sales stink. It doesn't matter. It's all about their team sales which is really the team purchases <laughs> because the customers are the distributors, but they'll give these, this advice and they're not helping their team. It's, it's not specific enough. So I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll give you really specific tips and it will help. You know, it's, it's good to create, it's good to express yourself and it, uh, it's, it's a long game. <laughs> is to um, tell a story about your, you know, something that you've learned within network marketing, how it's helped you have confidence. So now some trainers, not all trainers, but some trainers, not all trainers that you might encounter in this space, but there are some trainers that you might encounter in this space that will tell you to just Google tips for confidence and then use those tips to just Say, I, I learned these tips from this particular site. And if you want the rest of these tips, send me a private message. Well, that's plagiarism. And it's not, you can't do that without consent. So people can report your content. So to avoid that, what I recommend doing is you can still use the concept of create, doing a live video. However, use your own experience and tell a story. I would just do one. I wouldn't like bulk it out with doing two or three tips about confidence. I would just do one story, especially now it's a different time. It's, you know, 2022 going into 2023. So I'm looking down, I'm still smiling. I'm acknowledging the people that are commenting, they're leaving comments live. So I'm just doing that, like that slight acknowledgement. What we were coached to do is to, uh, which I think is really good advice is to engage with certain comments during a live video, but don't get derailed because if you do choose to repurpose your content, it's going to break up like kind of the rhythm of it be like, well, what's, they're just like, oh, hi, hi, Kyle, how is it going? You know, you can do it like a little bit, but you don't want it to like interrupt the flow. So that's, so what I'm doing is I'm, I haven't been on live for a long time, like months and months and I'm healing and um, I'm kind of just like looking at my friends that are, have been out <laughs> or exiting or they have the, the ovaries or the balls or whatever the expression is now to um, comment on a piece of my content. <laughs> And uh, a lot of people have been in and out of the industry, so you can't get away with things anymore. People are watching and people will report your content. So in order to avoid that and to serve the people that you want to impact and show up powerfully, I suggest. Those are three words, phrases, serve, show up powerfully, impact. I use those for a reason. Telling a story about how your own business taught you confidence or what you learned about it, stories do sell. And I wouldn't um, avoid, I would uh, avoid like lecturing, like this is the lesson of why I learned this. I would just tell the story and then let the person fill in the blanks. So there's a power in silence of just finishing the story and then allowing the like person watching, the people watching your audience to make it their own. That was a really good piece of advice I learned from the network marketing coaching group too, is to not worry about filling in silences. And you'll see a lot of um, multi-level marketing um, reps, distributors that are making content. It is frantic. And I was frantic too. I can get frantic manic um, because there's that fear of like, you need to fill in the space. But that was a really good piece of coaching advice that stood out from what else, what other people are being taught is to not be afraid, which makes it all the more dangerous because 
a lot of this stuff, it, it's, it's very manipulative. You don't need to like say this is the summation this is the lesson this is the moral of the story um do yes let the story do the talking allowing people to fill in the blanks is more powerful than you doing the explaining and and it helps with authenticity as well i was also 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 i was also coached um that it's okay to use notes during your live videos and i won a lot of contests doing this <laughs> for what it's worth um, it's okay to read your notes, like hold them up and just like glance at them that people don't really care. They more, they care more about um, the value, what's in it for them. So I'm doing all of this stuff. I might, wouldn't do it now. I may, cause I'm like experimenting, like, how am I going to create content? This is who I was. Do I want to continue? This is how I was taught. But then there's me. This is, this is what I do. I want to go, I want to go against everything. I want to explore. Even when I was doing that, I was doing things differently. I'd like rebel. Um, but I'm doing that, all these things I'm doing it for a reason is to reach people that are still within that it's familiar territory to them, like how I'm doing this, how I'm saying things and even how I'm holding the paper and like making sure you can see that I'm like glancing at it. I think it's important to tell people that I'm doing this too. I'm, like just be totally wide open here. It's like, I'm doing this to potentially reach you to bridge the, like the gap to have a conversation, you know? I could have a conversation. I don't want to have a conversation. I want you to start having conversations with yourself. Critically think. That's what I mean. <laughs> the hun is still strong in me. <laughs> so now the content of this, you want to have a powerful title for your headline, like the title of your video, because people are scrolling very quickly through Facebook. They're scrolling even quicker through TikTok. And if your title isn't compelling, then people aren't going to stop and watch your video. So an old reliable this is something that else it's really easy to do is just to fill in the blanks of how to blank even if so how to even if so if all roads lead to confidence you can always do content on confidence and relate it back to your product service or opportunity <laughs> and the title you can do how to even how to get shinier hair even if you suck at styling your hair how to get more confidence even if you have self-doubt how to whatever so how to even if is a is an old reliable keep it really simple so i want to follow keep this um video about is the kiss principle keep it simple stupid right? <laughs> okay uh let's see here now for the call to action this could be something that you do to help you build your vip customer i didn't go into like how to do a live video how we're taught to do a live video which was um, intro question, content call to action. That was in the network marketing coaching group. So it'd be intro. Hi, my name is Julie Anderson. Question. Do you struggle with what to post, how to post for black Friday? Then the content, well, I'm going to share with you three tips on exactly how you can crush your network marketing business this black Friday. And then like you like fucking number one, number two, number three. And then your call to action is the action that you want to take. So that's when you'll see people say, drop a unicorn emoji. If you want to get on my VIP exclusive customer list or whatever, there's something about that. We're taught, um, like, you know, like pulling out the energy, like it can get people. And I feel it. I've used that like on TikTok. I've used it. Like when I'm just creating content, I can, I can feel it. There's truth in that. Right. But it can also like fucking go to the dark side. You know what I mean? Like you can fucking see it. This is so fucking weird. I'm not even a year out. December 13th will be my year out, like out speaking out. I, I was out and speaking out at the same time. It's just, I don't know, it's fucking weird. Because this is what you want to do with the intent of this specific live video is you want to build your exclusive VIP customer list. And you want to do it in a, like a non schmoogly way. So after you've done your video, after you've, to you've told your story, you could say something like this as a call to action. So that's the, what you're going to say at the end of the video in order to have people maybe reach out to you. You want to them to take action. But for you, you want to build this customer list. You want people to be informed of your Black Friday sales. You want people to purchase from you. So you could say something like this. I hope you found the story about me becoming more confident helpful. Thanksgiving and Black Friday are coming up next week. And I really like shopping the sales. I don't know about you, but I really like shopping the sales. So my company's going to be having some sales. If you wanted to be added to my exclusive VIP customer list, 
send me a DM with VIP, just VIP in it. Just type in VIP and send me a DM. So you see, I'm like repeating these things over and over again. That's part of the strategy as well. We were coached to, which I still, I believe is really good advice is if you give people too many options, they're just going to default to taking no action. So that was another reason why just to give them one thing, like if you even give somebody two choices, like drop an emoji or send me a DM, just tell them to send you a DM. And when you're in network marketing, you don't want people to go on to Google, Amazon, or eBay. That was another thing that we were coached because then they might purchase from Amazon. They might purchase, they might read a negative, they might read a negative review <laughs> of your multi-level marketing company or product. So you, you want to, um, you don't want them to get that information. That's negative information. You want to make sure they have accurate information. That's what we were coached to say. And we believed. So that's why we're like, I'll send you a DM. It's all about creating conversations. So this is like, you want to have people on your VIP exclusive customer list, but doing live videos on a daily basis, it's all about not getting a customer or uh, a recruit right away. It's about creating conversations. All you want to do is start a conversation and then just keep that conversation going until you get them. <laughs> Welcome to my new network marketing company. I sell high altitude potatoes. And thanks for watching. Bye. Like just kind of end it there. So you want to make it clear in a simple, like really simple instructions, what the action somebody is going to take. And then hopefully you'll have people that would like to reach out to you that would like to be added to your VIP customer list. And then you have a list. And then when your sales start, then you can reach out to them and you can let them know. So that's kind of, um, oh, and anyone who comments on your post, use discretion on who's commenting on your post. I know it's been um, suggested or taught and coached. I'm like really using a lot of synonyms, eh? To love. I don't know what that is. It's like I speak in threes. And I think a lot of people do too. It's something that's weird about human behavior. Maybe it's like network marketing or I don't know. We see people say, I've been at it 10, 15, 20 years. It's like, what? What fucking one is it? Like, that's a pretty broad, like, and I do that too with like synonyms. I don't know why. It's so weird. I'm going to pause this. I can only record 30 minutes at a time. I'm at 27, 27. So hang, hang tight here. That's weird. All right. Back at her. Every comment that you receive. Pitter patter, get at her. And that's not um, safe on social media. So use your discretion and use your instincts. You could like a comment. You can say thank you. That to me is like, use your instincts. That's so I'm like, if I can use the word instinct in there, then people can start maybe one day <laughs> using their instincts more and more about just questioning what they're a part of, what their leader is saying, what their upline is saying, what their coach is saying, uh, noticing that there's a contradiction, like follow the instincts, just kind of, I'm just gently introducing these words on the off chance that one person out there stumbles across the video. A shot in the dark is always worth it. You never know. Maybe this is my naivety, you know, I, but I really believe that most people are good, you know. Thank you for watching or something like that. But be really cautious about loving any comment, every single comment, because it can, um, you can, you can get into some pretty like weird territory, especially on social media. So just, just be mindful of that. And then you're going to have this list and you can add people's lists. That's the first one for you. This part of me, like I like to do Easter eggs in my content too, where, you know, it's just cool. And if you don't know what that is, um, I don't even know if I really know what it is, but this is how I intend to use it is it's like people that um, know my content or follow me or like, I fucking hate that follow me. Right. But you, you hang out on social media together and there's certain things like high altitude potato or a unicorn and broccoli emoji shit that happens on like TikTok and that or something i've said on facebook and then people get it and it's it's a really cool way to like those strengthen strengthen those bonds of community and part of this is this i've had this about this fucking brush because there's so many people within um network marketing particularly the network marketing coaches that like to go on and on about how if you're posting about how much you like a product and you're not making money from it, like you're just such an idiot. I mean, it's just, you should just be doing this. And I noticed that I use this as an example in quite a few videos here on YouTube. And I thought, I think I should just like integrate this all the time just to fucking piss someone off. That's how my brain works. Second one. Now this is, this is like the best thing. 
I'm going to use this language again to like emphasize how uh, a lot of people train on this and do this, but it's also going to be providing value for people still within the multi-level marketing industry because ultimately I'm trying to reach one person out there. It might be you watching this right now that is wanting to exit and this is a bridge. So I follow my instincts. That's why I'm doing this video. So this is, in my opinion, this is the number, like this second one is actually the first, the best thing that you could possibly do to help build your exclusive VIP customer list or to like just increase your sales, not only build your list, but increase your sales. I just want to apologize too, if it's hard to hear, I don't know how else at, at yet so far, I don't know how to make this sound or improve the sound. I just have, I'm on Facebook and I'm playing it and I've just turned my sound way up. I don't know if that's, if there's another way to do that, but so you'll, you're going to hear background noise and stuff. Um, so just my apologies for that. And it's to have a customer group already have a customer group. So what that looks like is if you have a Facebook group, you might not have customers yet, which sucks, but I'll give you, I'll tell you what you can do if you don't have a customer group. If you have a customer group, this is where you can put all the tutorials in there. I did a YouTube video yesterday about um, some top earners giving advice to their team, which was not very good, um, which was really weird. <laughs> so I'm here to like help out you from an anti MLM creator. I'm going to help out MLM creators to create more compelling content that will translate to sales. If you have a customer group, that's where you want to put in tutorials. That's where you want to demonstrate your um, exactly what the product is or the new ingredient or what's going to be coming because people already love those products. They know the lingo. There's all, and if you have a good culture in there, people like to joke around. They're really excited about the, the products and how it's benefited them. It's going to be easier to sell to them. So that's another thing is um, it's easier to sell <clears throat> to people who have already purchased from you than it is to acquire a new customer. So go after the low hanging fruit and you, and, and you can give them advance notice. So it's kind of like, you don't need to build a list. You can just let everybody know in the group as soon as the sales drop, which typically happen, they might be happening now. I know a lot of companies have pre-sale, pre-black fr pre -black Friday sales. Some of them, they, they drop it Thursday at midnight, right? So give them, give them tips too. So this is something that you can do. A lot of times the websites crash. There's a lot of confusion. So you, so I'm not elaborating on why the websites crash, that it's made that way to create a false sense of fear of missing out. I'm just trying to use the language and examples. This is exactly how I would train my team. This is how I would be trained, you know, for black Friday and just what's going on. You can like do like the preemptive like equipping of your customers and your like distributors within your group and let them know this is some this is what sometimes happens if you try to order the flash sale and it doesn't go through take a screenshot and send it to this email here's the number for customer service so it's going to lighten your load because the number one the number 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 one tip is always your mental health is the most important here and getting enough sleep and um it's like, then it's like quality time with your family, but your mental health is the most important thing. So you can do that. And these are good people. Like, this is the thing. People believe that they're doing really good. They're trying to improve the lives of their families. They're trying to make some extra money. They think this is what I got to do. You know, I'm going to take this training. I'm going to apply these principles. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, prioritize this now for a better day in the future. And I'm going to change the world, you know? They're doing this because they really believe that it's, it's going to help, you know, not only themselves, but their families, those around them, you know, in the customer group. So, and this is also like the perfect place to just invite conversations with your like customers is like, what are you hoping that will go on sale? Like you can amp up the excitement and I would put more focus into the, your customer group as opposed to trying to attract new people during Black Friday, because it's always, it's already going to be way too busy. You're going to have a lot of, you're already going to be doing prospecting. You're going to be following up. You're going to be creating new content. So go for all already where, where the people are already there. They want to buy stuff. And okay. So then you're like, well, that's great, but I don't have. And what we were taught is like, it's like, and I don't know if I'm using it correctly, um, but it was like the group culture. So maybe it's like group indoctrination. But 
I really like this part of it. It's like, and I've used this when I created a group, when I started on TikTok, which I, I don't have, I don't accept new members into it anymore because the amount of spammers in there, it was just on a daily basis. All your, all us, like, like the people that volunteered to be admins, you're just removing people all day long, but there's about 6,500 people in that group. And I'm like, it's about culture. So feeling good. What can, it's just going to be about like, um, helping people. I made a whole bunch of tutorials. This is when TikTok first started to become popular and nobody, there was no tutorials on YouTube at the time that were in English. So I was making a whole bunch of tutorials and then I would put them into this group and like, this is how to set up your profile. This is what button to push. And I would just do these screen recordings. They were not the greatest tutorials, but they got the job done and got people on TikTok and creating content, which is what it was about. And then, you know, you put in memes in there. Like, of course, it's got to be memes <laughs> for Gen X. It's like, it's all about the memes. And for me, it's like cat memes and, and, and have, you know, people asking questions or supporting each other, that kind of feeling. So it's not a customer group. So translating this like from multi-level marketing, which is don't always talk about the product service or opportunity. You could, we would joke, it's so brutal now, but we would take pictures of all our products and be like, look at, I've got my hoard, right? But we're not front end loading or front, is it front load, front end loading, <laughs> whatever it's called. But we have all these like scads of product, right? But we like, look at my shower and we, but we all really liked it. So we would post pictures like that. It has nothing to do with purchasing, but you're all like really liking the product and how it, you know, oh my, um, one of the things that would always happen to me is people would compliment me on my hair at Walmart. It, it, it fucking happened. It's the truth. And so I would use that all the time probably too much of the time looking back now but then other people would say oh my somebody complimented my hair too and that that's the kind of content you could have in the group where it's um i use the the this product to uh, fix my split ends and look at this i can't believe it really did you know it worked and as opposed to on your normal page your normal like content unless you're in the company it's just like nobody cares it's just going to push people further away they're already pushed away because you're in an mlm but that's the place. And it, it's like creating this really good culture, which is it's keeping people in longer. That's what I fucking did. See more of these reasons why I feel compelled, compelled to speak out. Customer group. I don't have any customers yet. And it's like, that sucks. So this is going to take more time because then you're going to have to continue to prospect. Just sending cold messages, maybe to your... Hmm or sending messages to your cold market, warm market, or heart, hot market. I was going to say heart market. <laughs> and so that can be this, especially during this time during Thanksgiving, especially if you're in the U.S., you want to be spending time with your family, but then you have this added hype and excitement and you want to participate in marketing and you want to acquire new customers and you want to, you know, you have pride in your products and your team and you want to grow. And it's going to be emotionally draining. So real recognize that, doing additional prospecting during this time is going to be very okay. You know how hard for me right now it is for me not to drop the F-bomb. I am purposely doing this right now. So that's why I can drop it fucking here on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Facebook. Fucking fuck. Okay. I'm like back into hunt mode right now. MLM mode. It's going to be harder. And it's going to be more mentally and emotionally draining for you to prospect during this time. So just be kinder for yourself. If you have big goals, maybe you're prospecting people like 10 people a day or 20 people a day. It's okay to back off during Black Friday, even though it seems counterintuitive, just because there's so much uh, like hype around things. Customer group is where it's at, though. It's the best way to, to increase sales. But I've given you another like alternative. I know it's it's you, you got to do you got to prospect people in order to hopefully add them to your, you know, customer list. Um, people you have been speaking with, they might be interested, but have balked at the price. So you could message them now. We're like a week away and you could say, you know, I, I know you're interested, but you were saying the price was too steep. There are black Friday sales coming up. Would you like me to add you to the list that I'm compiling? You'll my VIP exclusive list because the word exclusive is supposed to make people feel very like excited and part of something, you know, in, in the secret, in the know. And if they say, um, if they say no, or if they're kind of hesitating, what I advise like the do's and don'ts of this 
is don't say, well, this is the last time I'm going to contact you. I'm going to remove you from my list. That's not smart. That's snark. So you, cause you never know where people. I was taught that I was coached that is to, um, like use that as this way they're going to be missing out on something. I'm just going to remove you from my list. Like with this assumption that people don't want to be removed from the list, but it just comes across so manipulative. Like you can see through this stuff now, but I remember doing it and they were like, fine, remove me from the list. <laughs> what I get, what I like getting a kick out of right now in anticipation of something that may never happen, but it's just like, wouldn't it be fucking rad if somebody uses this advice and it helps them and then they eventually get the fuck out? Like, I think, I think this is a really cool way to like create fucking cognitive dissonance. Maybe, I don't know whatever people are at they might they just you know they might be having a bad day or whatever and if you come out with a statement like that where you're you're feeling like that you need to be quite postured around something it will just put them off and you're not going to uh, acquire them as a customer or a distributor anytime ever again um and you can always think to yourself too how did you catch that postured but i want to be spoken to so that's tip number two Marike says, if they say no, tell them they aren't exclusive, right? <laughs> We're going to unleash into the banter after this because I can feel it. <laughs> exactly. It's like, well, you're not very exclusive after all. Third, third tip for you. This is, I'm trying to help you keep this simple as you're doing your content creation during Black Friday. Because, um, like I said, that YouTube video um, that I did yesterday, this was about a particular company that had 10 tips for people to do. And I can tell you with like absolute fact that it would be impossible for anybody to do those 10 tips during a two day period, like for Black Friday, the way they have it set out. And I was somebody that um, I've got the receipts for this because I have cranked out, I've been a person that has been consistently putting out 50 pieces of content over a long period of time, doing daily live videos, prospecting 200 people a day, following up with 40 people a day, uh, doing four different live videos every day on different platforms. I'm the person where they're like, can you imagine what she could have accomplished had she put all that energy into a legitimate business? <laughs> That's me. That's a lifetime of fucking regret. So how they are recommending how you approach Black Friday is going to set you up for failure. So good thing anti-MLM is here to help you <laughs> generate more sales this time of year. Uh, okay, so the third and final tip for you is um kiss story so i'm like keep it simple stories stories in uh when you, you're being trained on how to do stories keep it simple think of they're so fucking horrible at teaching how to do stories in network marketing it is unbelievable how fucking difficult they make it this is going to be the best piece of advice for anybody to fucking create stories I have no idea why they don't teach us. Actually, I do because they, it's not about it's not about helping people generate sales. Right? It's just about signing up or recruiting more people. You know, think of it like this: just three pieces, beginning, middle, and an end. That's you don't it. need to have like okay, people just love to see what you're doing. I'm gonna have a a picture of my really awesome mouse pad, and then the coffee I had, and then breakfast. No, it's a fucking story. Why didn't they ever just say that beginning, middle, end? That makes so much sense. And then instead of all this like convoluted bullshit where we're like personal development, I've got to write my affirmations down. I'm so happy and grateful that I am the top number one ranking person with this company. Like none of that stuff. It's just like beginning, middle, end. There's an actionable step that you could use all the time. If you're going to be talking about your mouse pad or your coffee or um, your network marketing product, you know. It pisses me off because they purposely made it. I don't, I don't fucking know. It's like such a weird thing. Like all these conflicting emotions because there's so many good people involved in this and creating content has, I really like creating content and I know other people do too. It's like, why don't they just fucking help people? You know, I know why. Oh, keep it simple because this is, um, it's Thanksgiving, it's Black Friday. It's going to be emotionally draining. There's going to be a lot going on. There's a lot of hype. All these people are going to be hitting new ranks and you're going to hear all these people that have generated $1.4 million of sales and we're the number one team. It's going to be so much coming at you. You're going to be comparing yourself to other people. You're going to be finding yourself like, I, don't, I didn't get that customer I wanted. It's going to be a lot. My toxic trait is that I am Gen X. <laughs> so creating content in that frame of mind 
it's you're not going to be able to do it. It's not going to be compelling and you're not going to attract anybody to you. So just keep it simple and do it in three pieces, beginning, middle, end. You can do this for all stories all the time. Doesn't matter whether you're on Instagram or whether you're on Facebook. First example. My hair used to suck. It was not shiny. And then second slide. Now my hair is amazing. Shiny. Third one. What's your hair like? And have a poll. It's like it's greasy, it's tangled, it's amazing, and whatever else. And then you could respond to people and go, thank you for responding to my um, poll. How's your hair? You could start conversations that way. That's a cool way to do it. So it's like a beginning, middle, and end. I wrote another example down. I think it's important to give people within net network marketing specific examples. <laughs> it's like a, there's a movie on right now in the background, The Conjuring 2. This is like Inception because it's like there's noise in the background and then there's noise in the background again. There's noise in the background noise. You know, it's like those you're looking at one thing and it's the mirror and it keeps going, going, going. That's what it is right now. <laughs> because without specific examples, nebulous advice doesn't mean anything. It's just it's like, well, what do I do with that? So the second example is you could do before and after testimonials on the first and second slide. So you could have maybe a customer view, yours or your own, you know, before and after, say you have a photo or whatever. You could be like, this was me in 2019, this was me in 2020, and then you could have uh, a question sticker. And I would avoid using the, um, this is a heads up from the anti-MLM movement, is that you can't get away with doing yes and yes as options anymore. You can't, you got to have a yes and no. So don't be, yeah, as an option, like, do you want more information? Yeah. And then another option is hell. Yeah. It's like, have no, because you, you can't get away with it anymore. You've got to up your marketing game. <laughs> okay. And, uh, so, okay. That's, let's see. Yeah. The world has caught on to that at the end of every live video. Okay. So this is, I'm going to wrap this up. Okay. So here we go. Uh, Marie K says, I think we could do a wicked duo. <laughs> So at the end of every live video like this one, it's it's good to do a call to action. So that's what they call a CTA. So when you do your live video, which I recommend as the first thing to start building your VIP. We were taught to recap once you get to the end of the video because you've gone on and people are forgetting. So you want to recap the points that you made during the video. Customer list, you know, your call to action could be to like, if you would like to be added to my exclusive VIP customer list, send me a DM VIP. That's it. Don't give them more than one option. Just give them one option to keep it really clear. The second thing is to have a customer group. If you have a customer group, that's the best to market to them this time of year. It's going to be very easy. People already want to purchase. Um, but as we know, the real customers are the distributors. <laughs> anyway, I couldn't fucking resist. I had to get it in there. Hey. Right? Uh, third and final tip is the stories. When you're marketing stories, just keep it simple. Just think of it in three steps, beginning, middle, and end. You just do that. And you can always have that call to action at the end. Now, if I was a leader, like if I was still within the multi-level marketing space and I was like doing this to my team or just to other like network marketers to hopefully maybe one day attract that woo them from their company to mine, or maybe become a customer of mine, my call to action for this video would be I would say, what tip did you find the most helpful? Drop it in the comments. One, two, or three. That's, that's what I would say. So there you go. I hope this information helps you out. These are legit. I use them myself. And um, I am an anti-MLM creator. I am an advocate. I'm against the multi-level marketing industry. And... Uh, I do respect everybody that is within it, trying to improve their lives. And I've been called many things, toxic, venomous, bully, somebody who is a hater. And you can make up your own mind about that. So my call to action for you is if you would like to check out my YouTube videos I have, um, it's Julie Anderson videos. And if not, no big deal. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you around. Shit. Oh, I, oh, so that's, um, something that we were trained to like do prospecting. Um, if not, no big deal. So that's, that's meant for a certain, um, audience. All right. So that's the video. I hope it, um, 
lands with somebody out there. And at the very least, um, you know, everyone outside of multi-level marketing or people that have exited and are healing like me, um, it's, it's therapeutic, this kind of stuff, you know, we're talking about our experiences in a different way, instead of just like, this is what you do. And this is what you don't do. I'm like expressing how I would have done this video. Um, a lot of the conversations around people within multi-level marketing are centered on how could they do this? How can they say these claims? It's because they're in a fucking cult. All of these questions can be answered with that same answer. It's because they're in a cult. It has nothing to do with like, um, facts or, you know, where did you get that information? Where, where are your sources? It's because they're in a cult. If you remove the products from it, if you remove all of this other stuff from it, they're in a cult, the same as like a religious cult. That's how we behave. That's why they come after you. If you say, I don't like to purchase from multi-level marketing companies. That's why, you know, when you first, if you do start creating anti MLM content, you get fucking inundated with people, the same person over and over again, like all these comments. It's like, what the fuck? Like, you got to just fucking stop, you know? But that's what they, that's what, how people in cults behave. So I, I hope that gives you a bit of insight and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.